Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a very late Doctor Who review. <laughs> Life happens sometimes. So today I'm here to talk to you about Boom, the third episode of Series 14, Season 1, whatever you want to call it. I really think we need to clarify this. Like, I guess we're just saying it's Series 14, but it's Season 1 for Disney, you know, for the Disney era. This is an interesting little almost bottle episode. Like, they really only film on one set this whole episode and this one setting. And we see the Doctor stuck on a landmine for most of it. This is written by Stephen Moffat, you know, the showrunner for Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi's era as the Doctor. So, you know, one of the best of the Doctor Who creatives. You know, he really gets it. And <laughs> he returns here once again to show off. So, when I said it's a bottle episode, I mean is pretty much this entire episode takes place on this alien planet, which is covered in mines. It's a battleground. We're not at the t start of the episode introduced to the enemy or anything like that. We just meet these soldiers, and they're navigating the minefield. And we encounter the ambulance. This is a robot that is played by Susan Twist, showing up again, which, addressing the Susan Twist right at the start... I know that Russell T. Davies has said, like, oh, we just really liked her and wanted to bring her back. Like, now, obviously, he's lying with that. Because then on the Doctor Who social medias, they're even pointing out Susan Twist. And, like, ooh, what's the, what's the deal with Susan Twist? And so, I am waiting for that reveal at the end of the season, I assume. But the ambulance is this android that's supposed to heal those that, because capitalism... <laughs> that it deems, like, worth saving, you know. It's not here to save all soldiers, but only those who would be worth it, you know, for profit. And so it ends up killing the man that we see in the intro because he's blind, and so it kills him because he can't fight, and he can't earn them more profit in the war. And during this man's execution, the doctor runs in and ends up landing on a landmine, and that's where we spend the entire episode. And so, the Doctor can't move this entire episode. This is kind of... The first half is a lot of Ruby. You know, Ruby trying to solve the problem and trying to help the Doctor get off the landmine. And the Doctor eventually comes to the conclusion of death by salesman. You know, he talks about how this company profits from the war because they make arms and weapons. And so, what better way to profit than by continuing the war effort? keeping it going. Again, kind of timely with current events. So when this scenario first started, I kind of wondered what's the big deal. Like, obviously the doctor doesn't want to die, but would he not just regenerate if he blew up on the landmine? You know, just tell Ruby to get back. But, yeah, the doctor doesn't want to die, and then it's also explained later that the mine uses, like, your body's internal energy to cause the explosion and so with the doctor being a not time lord you know the timeless child he would supercharge his body so much that he would blow up half the planet so obviously a problem i also think it's interesting that they note here that this is ruby's first time on an alien planet even though last week in the devil's cord they acknowledged that the Doctor and Ruby had been traveling together for like six months. And so, what were they doing in all that time? Just going back and forward in time, you know, on Earth? Because, yeah, it, kind of interesting. The time skips are, again, part of my concern with the shortened episode count this season. Like I said, we only have eight, and we're already three in, and so... I do worry that they are going to start having complications, you know, having issues with that. Of We're going to miss a lot of time because we just have to jump to the important bits of the story and skip all the filler. So then the doctor, because it's a smart mind, he, and he has his foot up, his foot is getting tired, and him and Ruby have this little exchange where he needs Ruby to hand him a canister that we later learn is an urn, you know, uh, the remains of the soldier we saw killed by the ambulance earlier. And so then Ruby and the doctor 
have this exchange where the doctor wants her to just throw it. He doesn't want her close in case it blows. <laughs> and so, and he literally gets like real serious with her and he says, you know, I forbid this. And she says, good luck with that. You know, very almost, at least for me, felt like 12 and Clara in series eight, you know, when 12 was still kind of learning and growing, he was kind of the grumpy old man and Clara had had these experiences already having traveled with uh, Matt Smith, the 11th Doctor. And so it was interesting to see that dynamic of the Doctor, like, actually get serious with his companion. Because, you know, usually the Doctor, at least in my opinion, almost sugarcoats things for their companion, or like, they will be okay. But this one was like a, I forbid this. <laughs> and Ruby does it anyways. And I think that does come from the fact that the Doctor's not scared that he'll blow up, but again, he was scared for Ruby's sake. I also love that this whole episode was just the theme was eat the rich. You know, the doctor, like I said, is constantly pointing out that the war is going on to further capitalism. You know, they keep the war going so that they can sell more products. And we learn by the end of the episode that there actually is no war. It is just soldiers kind of fighting themselves so that they keep buying and buying and they don't even realize there is no war to be had. There was a moment where the soldier we saw earlier, his daughter, finds the doctor and Ruby with his remains and his hologram, and the doctor begins to cry. And it kind of made me realize, the doctor has always cried, but I think 15 has cried in every single episode so far, which is interesting. It is nice to see that almost human side of the do you know, that he... While he is maybe removed from space and time, he's still in emotionally invested in what's happening, and he still cares. That's why he's the doctor. He cares. He wants to help. And so I do like that he cries almost every episode. I'm curious if, like I said, we'll see him cry every episode this season. So then during all of this, some of the soldiers find the doctor and Ruby, and during this altercation, the doctor actually gets shot because he's holding the remains of the soldier who is dead. And during this, this triggers the ambulance to come. And of course, the ambulance would set off the mine, which the doctor warns everybody that, you know, he would blow up this whole planet because his regeneration energy would just consume it all. And when the ambulance does hook up to the doctor, he also sort of starts to, like, glitch it out, because I don't think it's built for Time Lords slash Timeless Children. So the it does start to freak out on him and, you know, can't heal him. It thinks he needs to die. And so in order to get the ambulance away from the doctor, Ruby plans to shoot one of the soldiers, you know, just, like, in the shoulder, in the arm, you know, just a flesh wound to get its attention. So then, while Ruby is trying to distract it, she ends up getting shot, and she falls, and she starts to die. And this again furthers our mystery of what is Ruby? What is Ruby Sunday? Because she falls, she gets shot, she is dying, but it's not instant death. And when the ambulance plugs into her, it says she's 3,000 years old, I assume, I know some people might be jumping to the conclusion of, oh my god, she's 3,000 years old. I think it's because we're in the future, and so it's, you know, factoring in that she was born in, like, what was it, what'd they say, like, 2004 or whenever she was born? Interestingly enough, though, Ruby, just like the doctor, breaks the ambulance, like, it freezes and glitches and keeps repeating itself. And it cannot find her next of kin, which Ruby starts to cry, you know, who is my next of kin? And that was really good. And then just like last week, it starts to snow. And I, I feel like the doctor isn't questioning this enough. Like, I guess, what else do you do? But the fact that every time this woman is in distress, it starts to snow... Wouldn't you question, like, you would... I know he is questioning, like, we saw him scan her, and we didn't get those results. But I feel like he would be pushing more. And i questioning, is Ruby aware of all of this? Like, like, did Ruby see the snow in episode one? Or did Ruby hear the music in episode two? Because nobody's questioning this stuff. And it is weird. Like, it is... 
Clearly something is wrong. Furthering my belief that I think Ruby is either connected to the Doctor, like is an ancestor of the Doctor, or could possibly be one of these otherworldly beings that is like the toy maker or the maestro. And of course the ambulance deems that Ruby is uh, not worth it. You know, good old capitalism, good old modern day healthcare where it's not worth it to save her and so it just unplugs from her and gives up. And in order to save Ruby, the doctor actually convinces an AI replica of the soldier killed at the beginning to go in and kind of reprogram the ambulance to save Ruby. And something I thought was interesting here was that the doctor says to the man, you know, dad to dad, you know, can we save our, you know, can we save our family? And I thought that was interesting because, again, the doctor saying dad to dad. Uh, I'm curious who he's referring to. Like, there's, of course, Jenny, which was made out of the DNA of 10. Or there is Susan. You know, this could be another reference to Susan. Again, furthering my theory that she will return at the end of the season. But uh, Susan was always never quite clear, like, if she was by blood the doctor's child, you know, granddaughter, or if she was adoptive granddaughter. So I thought it was interesting. Like, the line is vague enough that who knows who it's referencing to. I am going with it is again referencing Susan, and that she'll be back by the end. So then the AI is able to reprogram the ambulance and revives Ruby, and all is good. The doctor's able to step off the mine by the end of it. And I thought the daughter had a really good the daughter of the fallen soldier the ai soldier had a really good line where she talks about you know because ruby and the doctor are apologizing for her you know i'm sorry your dad's gone she goes not gone just dead which is really deep you know that kind of belief of there could be an afterlife there could be something more to this you know he lives on within me things like that which is always hopeful you know and doctor who is always hopeful and at the end, the doctor even closes out by saying, what survives us is love. And I think that is going to, again, feed into the idea of Ruby Sunday. Of She does not know her family, but she is loved by those around her, the doctor and her adoptive mother. And I just think this whole season is going to end up, after seeing three episodes of it, I feel like we're going to continue to expand on Ruby while also exploring the found family aspects of Doctor Who and, you know, life and death and that things aren't always okay, but we can find the light and the hope in all of it, which at the end of the day is what Doctor Who's about. You know, it's what I feel was really missing from, say, the Chris Chibnall era of Doctor Who, where 13, this is nothing against Jodie Whittaker, but 13 wouldn't really always acknowledge the loss of life and things like that. Like, she would just, oh yeah, he's dead. Oh well, move on. Versus we see Shooty Gatwa actually does care. Like I said, he cries. And he's hopeful. You know, he wants to save everyone. So yeah, not too deep of an episode. Nothing too crazy. Like I said, very simple, very straightforward episode. I enjoyed it. I'm excited to see next week because how this week was a lot of the Doctor and the landmine. Next week, from the you know next time on, we see that it's a lot of Ruby alone without the Doctor. And so I'm excited to see what comes next. As always, if you like what you saw here, I talk about nerdy stuff all the time, like Doctor Who, Star Wars, Marvel, anything you can think of. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when that next one's coming. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.